Good evening from Australia. I hope um, the presentation is up and running. Yes. Okay, yes. I, I assume it is. Um, as I said, um, a very good evening uh, from Australia. Thanks, Dirk, for the introduction. Um, uh, as Dirk has already said, my name is Michael Volker. I'm here the director of the Tourism Research Cluster at Curtin University uh, and also the research lead for the Australia Southwest uh, Sustainable Tourism Observatory. Um, for the next eight minutes or so, um, I have the pleasure to share with you a few um, reflections around the participatory processes um, that we applied in establishing the observatory and also some uh, reflections on its uh, governance. Our observatory covers um, what is called the Australia Southwest um, uh, tourism destination. Um, it is um, a beautiful all year round destination in the southwest corner of um, the Australian continent, uh, covering approximately 60,000 um, square uh, kilometer. There is plenty of nature, 25 uh, national parks, um, a lot of uh, surfing, adventure experiences, um, uh, local produce and um, the associated uh, gourmet uh, experiences. Uh, in terms of visitation, the, the destination uh, gets approximately 3.3 million overnight visitors a year. Um, and um, it has weathered the COVID-19 crisis quite well so far. Um, there has been a minus 20% drop um, in the year ending in June 2020, but this has been um, recovered uh, in 2021. This uh, situation is due to um, one um, Western Australia being lucky to not having been affected that much by, by COVID cases. Uh, and secondly, um, also the destination having uh, had a, a history, traditional history of, um, uh, of a dependence on domestic tourism, uh, which has even increased uh, during uh, the uh, pandemic. Um, in um, before discussing um, the, the governance of the observatory, uh, I guess it is useful to briefly mention that um, tourism governance in Australia is typically organized on four uh, sort of four levels. There is a, a highest level tier one, uh, which is the federal uh, level. There is a, a tier two, which is the state level. There is a tier three, which is the regional level. And finally, tier four um, are essentially the tourism businesses and uh, operators. Um, in establishing the observatory, uh, we made a very um, conscious effort to engage uh, with the levels two to four um, and all of them. Um, and um, so except the federal level, all of the, observ all of the uh, other levels of, of tourism governance have been included into the establishment and actually also the running uh, of the observatory. Uh, indeed, uh, we have been very successful, I would say, in including tiers two and tier three, um, um, almost in a comprehensive manner as far as the tourism actors are involved. Um, and in addition to that, uh, we picked a few um, larger businesses also from, from the tier four uh, level. Uh, we then uh, included these, um, these key uh, stakeholders into a, a working group um, around the observatory and around the peak uh, organization, which is in our case, the university, which um, leads uh, the uh, observatory. Um, this working group has essentially the task to, to advise, um, to control, but also to make um, the essential decisions um, in, in running the observatory. Um, when, setting, uh, when setting the observatory up, uh, one key stakeholder group uh, we have had a bit more um, challenges to engage with were the local governments, or as they're called uh, in other parts of the world, uh, municipalities. Um, however, um, after now one and a half years, uh, close to two years of operation, 
they have seen the value and they're increasingly um, getting on board. Um, indeed, um, they are quite interested in, in our findings. Um, having said that, they are not, they haven't been integrated into the working group so far, but they, uh, we list them as partner organizations, as we do with some of the um, technology partners and um, other key partners who, who help us, which help us with some uh, specific um, skill sets and, uh, and expertise. Looking at the process um, of, of establishment, um, the initiative of the observatory was ours. Uh, when I say ours, it is the, the university. But uh, right from the beginning, um, we um, worked hard to, um, to have broad participation in, in the region. Um, we had um, numerous bilateral meetings. Um, we organized workshops with the partners. Um, we even conducted a survey to understand what um, the data needs uh, of the stakeholders are. Um, and all this has essentially been done also to understand um, how we can contribute. Um, so we, we put a lot of emphasis on, on trying to make a contribution um, and, and being relevant. Um, then we launched the observatory and, and the launch uh, was public. Um, so the wider community uh, was involved and uh, I would say broadly informed uh, at this stage. After the, the establishment, um, we have continued to uh, almost uh, more or less regularly meet within the working group. And we did meet whenever we had something to share in terms of results. Um, this also helped, um, I think, to, to make sure that, uh, that results were shared in a timely manner and they, they, they were delivered in um, as, as close to, to when they were available. Um, once again, when the annual um, report was ready, we um, um, organized a, a, a broader event, uh, once again, invited the local communities and launched the, um, the annual report. Um, so overall, um, I think we can say we, we made uh, sure, or we tried to make sure to share our findings as, as widely and as early as, as possible. Um, we made sure to listen to data needs, to um, research needs of the partners, um, but there was also an aspect of, um, of leading with topics and um, being the engine uh, of the observatory as, as well. So I, we should not neglect, uh, I think, that aspect um, either. Um, in, in theory, when we talk about governance, um, we can distinguish a number of uh, what we call means uh, of governance, so ways of um, trying to coordinate um, uh, collective action in, in a network or in a destination. Um, looking at these means, uh, when it came to establishing the observatory, what seemed to be most important in our case was trust, so establishing trust, um, which was uh, fueled very much by showing also um, that we had the expertise um, of, of doing the, the work. Um, once the observatory was established, um, it didn't mean that these two uh, means of governance lost uh, relevance or importance, but a third one became um, very relevant, I feel, uh, which is leading by setting the agenda and trying to convince the partners also that this is a way to go and um, new picking up new areas um, and, and so on. So. Uh, I think one of, one of my main messages is that there needs to be um, this sort of um, balance. In conclusion, I do think um, we, um, we, the observatory has successfully um, influenced and um, in, or has successfully provided evidence um, to the decision makers uh, in the region. Uh, I think there are many ways how um, it has influenced deliberations, uh, reflections, um, often in a subtle manner, which is definitely not that easy to track, but occasionally also in a more um, tangible manner, as uh, with the example on the slide, when a local um, government decided to apply for an ecotourism destination accreditation and the, the observatory has delivered uh, important uh, data uh, for, for that process. Having said that, there are also some challenges. Um, first, um, it's not that easy for us to get directly involved into the actual decision making. So we are more seen as a um, data consultant, I would say, um, uh, rather than a partner on the, on the table when decisions are made. Um, second, um, I feel the, the functioning 
of the collaboration very much depends on individuals in the specific organizations and it also depends on um, the, the leading organization, the peak organization of the observatory network uh, driving uh, and being the engine. Um, and we have been observing a higher willingness to collaborate among the best performance and a bit um, uh, challenges in convincing those who feel they are not the best in class in terms of sustainability to, to participate. Um, in moving forward, um, the two main um, focus areas in terms of governance for us are extending the uh, regional focus. So that's a major undertaking, um, uh, adding additional partners from uh, two nearby regions. Um, and secondly, also increasing the collaboration with local governments, as we do feel um, this helps to discuss uh, tourism in a, in a more embedded uh, manner. So we are very much uh, in favor of, of supporting that sort of process. Uh, I think that's all I would have to share for the time being and happy to answer any questions either now or later. Michael, I have one direct question for you related to a focus that the focus on innovative initiatives. Do you mean innovative in the sense of um, new, different to established practices, or do you see over there more the focus on catalytic initiatives? Um, yes. Um, so what we try to um, to concentrate part of our uh, funds, which are limited anyway, but we try to channel them into um, um, data analysis and collection initiatives that are that I would call uh, innovative, at least in the regional context. So I think that uh, for us seem to be a way to further strengthen our relevance in the region um, by initiating new, new um, ways of uh, measuring sustainability, if you like. An example is um, carbon footprint uh, measurements. An example is um, work around accessible tourism. Uh, a lot of this has um, been uh, obviously also encouraged by um, the, the Insta network and UNWTO, um, but regionally, um, we I would say we are leading that sort of um, that sort of uh, implementation, and I think it's important to do so.